Sorry. Okay, can I ask you a question, Mugash? Yeah. There's a story that I think we are skipping in this whole mix. There's a song that was released. By... I haven't come to that yet. Oh, 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 the time hasn't arrived yet. Oh, the time has come. It's coming past. past. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. Okay. Yeah. So remember how I told you that there were some special things going on. One of the special things that happened when I left, when I was still in the States, was the coming up of this band. One of the members of this band was this from one who came and taught us this song in high school, uh, Blinky Bill, Selanga. Ah, man, I told that part of the story hours ago. And Blinky had started a band with two other people. One of them was called Jim and the other one was called Dan. Now, Jim, I had met only once before, except I realized I had not met him that one time before. I'd had a meeting with him. He wanted to join the ad industry. You know, he was asking, you know, is there any advice or whatever? Um, and, you know, he ended up not joining, which I think was an excellent idea. But then it turned out that I had gone to the same high school as this dude. Mm. And he was part of Blinky's class. So he's one of those guys who something special was happening in terms of his artistic journey. We just didn't know that just yet. So Blinky and Jim were in the same class. <laughs> I think even in the same house. Blinky and Bill, Blinky, Blinky and, and Jim. Jim, or Blinky and Dan? Blinky and Jim. Jim Chuchu? Yeah. Oh. So two thirds of just a band went to changes, at least two thirds at that point. And then Dan had, I forgot what other school, what school he'd gone to. So they'd released an album called Scratch to Reveal. And by the time I was coming back to Kenya, uh, they were just getting ready to release their second album, which was called 82. And one of the songs on that uh, album was called Hahe. And they're in the process of shooting a video. Now, what they'd imagined Hahe, for that which video... Again was produced by? Hahe was produced by Musioka, mm -hmm. who was also a Changerian. There we go. So there was this, this sort of... Tell this dude funny. from... from, from class of, 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 of one guy who was two years behind me, one guy was three years behind me, coming together and making this song. I found out that Hahe was actually written for Nonini. Really? Or for P-Unit, I mean. And that, they sort that, of that, said that, no. that time, that, no, he was like, no, these guys won't deliver as, as, uh, ah. you know, so he's like, I, I remember Blinky, let me, let me give it a Blinky. Then, at the same time, I did a, at that time, I'm in between producing P Unit. Eh? So we did uh, this one. This was song was, ah, this song was for P Unit. <laughs> yeah. So what's what's the story behind? What so as, as we are working with Punit's album, I do this track. I remember I was in a matatu at living at center. I'd left my car at, at my mom's place, so I was like, let me just jab. So I enter a matatu, then I st this melody just came. So I recorded it on the phone. So I go back to the studio, then... How did it come? Like, what, what did it sound like? Just the way it is. Do, 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 ro, 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 dun, 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 dun. So I got in the studio quickly, like about 10 minutes later, it wasn't it was far. So I just played it on the keyboard and, and stored it. Then the following day I came and now started fleshing it out and adding things, things here, 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 here. Then uh, I just mixed Scratch to, leave, to reveal for just a band the, the previous year. Mm. So uh, there's a project Coca-Cola had signed on Punit to do. So I was thinking that I could give them this track for that project but even the project i mean we, we, we never finalized it i think it was dropped at some point so this track just sat and it already had the chorus hey i had recorded the chorus i'd recorded everything so one day i'm just chatting with billy he's like yeah we're about to finish our album so yeah we'll bring for you to finish for us some songs i'm like i think i have the perfect song because i was like when the drum pattern i did for this track i was like there's no way this song fits P Unit. It doesn't have the P Unit personality. So I gave it to them, and Bill went and did his stuff onto it. Then Jim and Bithy conceptualized the video with Dan, and as they say, the rest is history. <laughs> That's cool. 
Okay. Guy, I have, I have, I have him to thank for that decision. <laughs> mm. So they had some ideas for a music video, and and what they had in mind for the video itself was, we're going to shoot something whose production value looks low, and it's going to be intentional. Uh, they ended up using that idea for another song later on. But about a week, probably two weeks before shooting the video, they came across a trailer for a film called Black Dynamite. And Black Dynamite was a homage to, like a tribute to black exploitation flicks from the 70s where people had afros and they were in stories with over the top action and again the production values weren't that high. They didn't have very good actors, so you'd 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 go after a kung fu master who had never acted a day in their life, and make that person the star of your film. And black exploitation came and went, but someone was like, "Why don't you bring black black exploitation back with this film called Black Dynamite?" Jim and Mithi saw that trailer and they were like, "We're going to make a black dynamite. We're going to make a Kenyan black dynamite. We're going to make something that is in the same line as black exploitation flicks from the 70s, except we're going to have a Kenyan hero, and that hero is going to be called Mark Mende." <laughs> And in their criteria, who they were going to go and cast, they were like, why don't you cast someone who has long hair? Someone who has an afro, someone who would be convincing in this role. And someone who could actually be charming and put on a good performance. And so naturally, they picked K1. We shot that music video over the course of one day, sometime in April of 2010. April, May, March of 2010. And you probably would agree with me on this one. But if there's one thing about generating content and making art, you never know what the reaction is going to be. Mm-hmm. You make something that you think was going to be the best work of art and it's going to bomb. <laughs> and you make something that you think, ah, it's gonna, this is going to be passable. And then you realize you were sitting on gold the whole time. Mark Mende Hahe was the latter. It was gold. Uh, about three days to the launch of the video, which was a couple of weeks after we shot it. Um, by this point, I'd, I'd, I had a job because we shot the video for Hahe, I think, when I was a week away from starting my new job. Which was back at Ogilvy. Which was not Ogilvy, but at uh, Scanned, at Scan okay, Group. Yeah. Yeah, um, I hated that job. I hated it. It was miserable. Hated it. Um, the video comes out, and we had had all these plans for it. We had talked about how we were probably gonna. We said about how all of us were going to change our profile pictures to a, a screenshot uh, with the words "Who is Mark Mende? And everyone was going to be like, yeah, why have a bunch of people put this picture? And we were like, back then you could still change your name on Facebook quite easily. I don't know about now. You can't. You can't change your name. Yeah, you could change your name anytime. Mm. If you decided my name is this, you could change it. Um, and we were asked, please change your name to put Mark Mende as your middle name. So there's a bunch of people who either put this picture as their profile and then another bunch of people who put uh, uh, Mark Mende in their name. And then we released the video. Microphone check one, one, two. Now.
something happened <laughs> suddenly i can't tell you before then if there was something in kenya that had ever gone truly viral i, I agree i can't tell you for a fact mm -hmm. that there's anything at all that actually went viral. viral yeah because viral still wasn't a thing we used to call viral something that was going to be released online we didn't even know the meaning of the word yep like if it's going to be on youtube then it must be viral no that's not the definition but this thing just went viral people started talking about it on twitter people started posting the link everywhere and by morning of the next day it had been watched by probably a couple thousand people and we were like what's happening this thing became a media sensation it became insane it was crazy i had a tiny role in it um as someone who gets punched around a bit and all we what we thought we were doing was just shooting this fun little video and then it took a life on its own and became this staggering piece of people are approaching it in different different ways it was a piece of art it was a fun little video it was a definition of uh what it was like to be a child in kenya it took this phrase makmende this word that people had not used in a long time and it introduced Kenyans to a superhero, <laughs> an action hero, Mark Mende. I don't like to dwell very much on the result of it. Because after we were published in the Wall Street Journal and on CNN, you were on CNN. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, guys yeah. were interviewed on CNN. The guys were interviewed on CNN. It was pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's just called rehab, right? The rep wouldn't specify, right? Gotcha. Okay, yeah. now, now, speculate. Uh, you know. So, okay, clearly he's got his work cut out for him, right? Yeah, a lot of work. But what is this video you're telling me I just need to see? Yeah, this is going to make your day okay, okay? Yeah. you do know that reference uh when dirty harry meets shaft yes. in kenya this becomes the country's first viral sensation from kenya here's cnn's david mckenzie he's a cool cat he's part shaft part superman all kenyan Meet McMende, Kenya's first viral internet sensation. It's the brainchild of 20-somethings Blinky Bill, Jim Choo Choo, and Daniel Mooley. <laughs> they formed the group Just a Band. And they put their latest video on YouTube as a tease campaign. It's had tens of thousands of hits and counting. Then we start getting calls like, what what have you guys done? Do you know what you guys have done? And then we went on Twitter and like, it's like things are just, we were, for like three days, like we were just days. 50, 50 Mark Mende mentions per second or something on Twitter. A 
And it's not just the video. There's the cleverly faked GQ, Esquire, and Time Magazine Man of the Year covers, the McMender websites, and the jokes like McMender doesn't cheat death, he wins fair and square. Uh, K1 featured on pretty much every single newspaper. He was talked about on every single social media platform. People started posting videos of I saw Mark Mende and took out my phone and started filming. Some of them might still be there. Mark Mende cited or something like that. And at the top of all this was a video. This video that people just kept going back to and watching over and over again. And which started playing on Kenyan television and started playing on international television. It was crazy. Crazy. Now the thing about something like that, when it's crazy, people expect that you'll have sat with it and you'll have... And that it was intentional mm. for you to make this thing that was going to blow up. And you sort of knew that it was going to happen. And so they come to you and you're like, how do you feel, man? This thing's amazing. How do you feel? And we're like, <laughs> I don't know what to feel. We feel happy. But you know, it's a video that we made. It's cool. And people would stop you and be like, when will I saw Mac 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 And anytime I walked with K1, K1 was known everywhere. Yeah, There's not a single place he'd go to. That dude could go to the most obscure part of Nairobi or he could decide to walk through parliament, or he could decide to walk through Tao, or he could go to a club somewhere, and everywhere, someone would recognize him. Everyone was talking about Mark Mende. In fact, even political analysts were like, this is why Kenya needs an actual Mark Mende. <laughs> it was stuff like that. He showed up on cartoons. There was a time he was, there was a cartoon, a political cartoon, and he showed up on that. His likeness was drawn all over. Um, he ended up on t-shirts that were being sold at Masai Market. Um, Capital FM, remember? Uh, yeah, that, that came a bit later on. Okay. Um, uh, well, there was one more. Uh, the guys from Just a Band made these funny... They called K1 in and they were like, Yo, this thing looks like it's going to be big, let's do a voice. Let's, let's do a photography. Let's do a photo shoot right now. So they put him in the same costume and then they had the tie. The tie that the he tied tie, around yeah. his head. This red tie became something of an icon, hey, which was not icon. what we expected again. And there was a Time magazine cover, Newsweek magazine cover with these different pictures. And these pictures of Mark Mende went viral. Again, pictures went viral. And this is when I'm telling you, I was walking through Masai Market and I saw a t-shirt with Mark Mende on it. And I think he ended up on a couple of my tattoos, maybe, I think. Anyway, he ended up, he, Mark Mende infiltrated pop culture, pop culture. There's one more thing that infiltrated pop culture like that, but Mark Mende had, there's nothing that has done it quite like Mark Mende, and I don't think there's anything since, to be honest with you. That is, I might be wrong on this, but that went truly, truly viral and ended up embedded in pop culture. And it was a lasting thing. It ended up playing out for much longer. Yeah. The closest many, that I can many, think many many that, has, that that has happened again is maybe Giveriman. Yeah, probably, probably. But you but see, that didn't last. Yes, very it, long. it didn't last. That didn't last. Long. And you know, Giveriman, yes, was a viral sensation. Um, can you still hear me? Yeah, can you hear yeah. you? Very well. Yeah, Giveriman was uh, was a viral sensation, but it wasn't the kind of viral sensation that had a sort of. Um, it didn't it didn't set Only. the pace for anything. Yeah, yeah. It didn't lead to anything. In fact, Gederiman was part of a sham election. And he was part of the sham of the election because suddenly we were focusing not on the irregularities that were happening, but rather on this dude that happened to show up for election carrying Gether in his bag in a in a in a bag. On the other hand, he started being hailed as a a peace hero and proof that Kenyan democracy works and <laughs> what? <laughs> a lot of nonsense man. But Mark Mende was truly ours. That's what we felt. And then we started to realize that you put it out there and it'll really not be yours. As long as other people have said I like this theirs and you let them do with it what they will 
if they love you one day and hate you the next day, which is what happened when now we went on Capital FM and tried to orchestrate this stunt that they were going to launch a new breakfast show with Yves D'Souza and Gaetano and the story was going to be that they were kidnapped and I remember we put Gaetano was one of the morning presenters and suddenly he wasn't presenting and people tried to start this has- hashtag of Gaetano missing and a radio station had tried that stunt before where a radio presenter had gone missing and that was Kiss FM and it was for the launch of Pilsner Ice I think and they were talking about Caroline Motoko has been kidnapped and they even went to the extent of talking about making calls with her what's the room you're in like and she says I don't know it's dark and cold they covered my head as I was coming here they covered my eyes so I couldn't see I was blindfolded I've been gagged and I've been here and please if there's anywhere I can be rescued please come and then when people realized it was a cheap publicity stunt they were really mad so for some reason I don't know why no one raised the flag and thought your capital another station decided to do this and it was a big mistake and they went through with it of course it didn't work people reacted negatively and as much as they loved the videos that were releasing the videos sort of got the videos releasing where we were talking about yeah. you know i i have my my character taste of danger was the one who had them kidnapped and mark mende came and punched all my henchmen i ran away and then was that a paid for endorsement? Yeah, it was. It was mm. a paid endorsement. Oh yes. Wow. Eve in the flesh, huh? So, let's do this nicely. No, look at me. What do you want? How about you tell me where that tie is, babe? A tie? I don't know about a tie. You're not going to comply, you know. Tell me what I want to hear. I'll make this loser here speak. And I don't think you're going to like that very much. So make this easy on yourself. Just tell me where that tie is. I don't know. I don't know about any tie. Hmm. Surprised to see me, Gaetano? You came all the way from Kampala to meet me in the flesh. Taste of danger. Now. Tell me where the tie is. Tell me where the tie is. I have no idea what you're talking about. Where's the tie, man? Listen. You're lucky Eve is here. Because I will kick your Right? I will kick your You hear me, man? Where's the tie? I don't know what you're talking about. You know what? No more Mr. Nice Taste of Danger. Take care of him. You give me that watch, man. Why are you making this stuff for me? Eve, close your eyes, you don't want to see this. We have ways of making you talk, man. I gotta talk now! Huh? Will you talk now? Who the f is that? Get it off! But it didn't work as well as we thought. And then suddenly we realized it was a painful decision, a painful lesson for everyone. Yeah. You can be viral and still be the most miserable person in the room. Mm. And I'm really glad I learned that lesson early. 
fame won't make you won't give you the sort of joy that you want particularly if you have no say on it and the thing about something going viral is that you don't ever expect it will it's like a virus it's unexpected it just spreads and soon people come and approach you and they're like hey so what do you think and you don't have a say in it because you're still the same dude from the guy before the video was <laughs> released how do you expect that we're going to deal with everything and contend with it and sift all that content and you know like process it in our heads so that we can uh, how do you feel about this i feel very well because of this this is reason all of us are still trying to figure out what's going on just like you just like us and uh, just like us and and the good thing and also the problem with kenyans is that we're able to see vision from a mile away and suddenly everyone is talking about are you monetizing are you making money off of this thing Yo, if you're not making money off of this thing, you guys are wasting. This chance was wasted on you, man. How are you gonna not make those millions? This is your chance. This is your jackpot. Oh my goodness. Mark Mende, it's you. Oh goodness. Man, come take a picture with me. Sign autographs. Mark Mende took pictures and signed autographs. K1 carried it all with such grace. Was never rude to one single person, even and everything was being demanded of him. And even if this viral content was not making us any money. I'll never forget. That's the reality of it. I, I had a conversation with Blinky and I realized they wanted the video but they didn't want all this other rubbish that came with it. You get? Um, but also, when I, I didn't understand it because me, I was, I was one of those guys of monetize. Have you, you monetized your YouTube channel? Have you done this? Do you understand the revenues of all these things? But when I was like, okay, this thing has gotten out of hand. Is at the Groove Awards when Chris Kirubi came and he had a red tie. Oh, yeah. And now yeah, it's like it was a stupid stunt. Yeah. And then like you see my mark made a tie. And I was just like mm. And like no. And that's when you realize we don't own it. It's not ours. Yeah, that's when I was just And then like, we'll jump on it. Even even uh Kiss FM. Kiss FM started this thing of are you a Mark Mendo or are you a monkey? Everyone was just trying to jump on it. And Mark Mendo was that if you could answer the question correctly and Monkey was if you got it wrong. So I like, oh, so it's a Q&A and if you get it right or wrong, you're jumping on this property to make it sound. Nini. And... Okay, anyway. I'm glad we learned that lesson then. But the video came out when I had a full-time job. And again, here I am escaping something just like this. I was able to escape all over and get into something when my advertising career was starting. And I wasn't there, stuck with the existential questions about what does this mean? I was on to the next thing. So, same thing. This video came out and there was no time to be existential. All I was doing was working. That's it. The next special thing that happened that year. Yeah, 2010 was a special year, man. I started working and this was in April that I started working and then when I'd been about four months into the job, I really wasn't working out the way I wanted. You're uh, making money. I was making money for once. I'd moved out of home by this point. I was living alone and then my friend Kamau Andongo, uh, who I yeah, mentioned earlier as one of the people that I acted with on Serafina gives me a call and says he's doing casting for a film and the film is by one fine day films and i'm like ah that's what uh -huh. the did soul boy and i remember soul boy soul boy i watched it at a film festival and just gotten back and that film had really high production values it was a pretty well written film as well and we heard about this film that was going to be about crime in nairobi and it was going to be called nairobi half-life 